I want to talk about VR chat's communication. Um and my perspective on just things in general. Um First of all, uh I'm just kind of recording this off, you know, whatever. I'm not like planning it super hard. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to finish this, editing that, you know, and releasing it. Um, but I figured I'd at least capture in the moment uh, just how I feel. I want to go over the November 25th, 2024 developer update. Um, this developer update primarily includes a post about... SOPA, which is VRChat's new version of Udon. Not Udon 2. It is not the WebAssembly based um, Udon that we were expecting after two years of development. Um, again, this is just going to be kind of off the script, kind of all over the place. Um, but hopefully, this can be an important video. I feel like a lot of people say this just to say it, but like to note, I am not perfect by any means. Um, my opinion on this could be incorrect to a degree, right? Like my feelings are justified, I think, and the perspective I have, I think is, is understandable. Um, but obviously, like, there could be more to a story that we don't know. However, even if there is more to a story, the reason I'm making this is because of the communication from VRChat, historically. And it's not just, like, us taking things out of context, right? Like, there's been plenty of times, and like I said, I'm not perfect, where I just said rude things, right? Because multiple reasons that I won't go into, but... It just is, right? And I try really hard to not do that. Um, but still, sometimes your emotions kind of get the better of you. But in this case, I feel like I was mostly fine. There was one thing I mentioned, which was a screenshot of Straz's posts about something, which turned out to be irrelevant to the discussion we were having on the, on the forum thread. Um, but besides that, I feel like I... I took the most calm approach that I could um, while effect, trying to effectively communicate, right? Um, so, anyway, I guess, we'll, I guess we'll just hop right into it. So, developer update. 25th of November, 2024. Um, here's roadmap, great. Uh, persistent user data, great. Very happy. Been waiting for that for a long time. So happy it's released. Unironically, I love it. Uh, One-time purchases. This is cool. Um, this hopefully should allow creators to move off of other platforms, right? Like Jinxy or Gumroad or Booth or whatever, right? For to, to a degree. I don't know what this really entails or what you get or how it works, but we're heading in that direction. Finally, the creator economy is like working, right? All fine and great. Introducing Soba. We know you've been waiting patiently for this news. And here it is. We're excited to announce an update to our Udon architecture, Soba. Soba. Veritas is working on improving the Udon. Veritas scripting system. Currently, world creators can write code in two different ways. Udon graph, Udon trip. Veritas is introducing a third way, Soba. Creators can write Soba scripts in C Sharp, similar to Udon Sharp. Soba scripts are compiled to Microsoft's Common Intermediate Language, or CIL. This allows Soba to use a variety of features that are not available in the Udon Graph or Udon Sharp. And here's how it works. Uh, basically, Soba just exists entirely separately, and Udon Graph still does the Udon Graph thing. So we would, we would have to write Soba directly. We wouldn't use Udon Sharp, whatever. Okay, whatever, but there's a problem here. Let me find it real quick. Okay. Here is, here it is. 
December 15th, 2022. This is really close to two years ago, right? I'm going development, SK feature, great. VR chat New Year's Eve. This was string loading, which is fantastic. I was super excited about this. Like there are a lot of changes here that were great. Udon 2. Working title. This is a big one. We've been working on a system that provides much more functionality while improving performance and maintaining backwards compatibility. We're calling this Udon 2. So if you made runs faster, your old code will continue to work as before. Your graph programs compile into C Sharp instead of Udon assembly. You can use list, dictionaries, actions, etc., which granted they have included at this point for the most part, but still. Udon runs WebAssembly instead of Udon assembly. Your programs are compiled into a C Sharp script assemblies using Roslyn and then run within VRChat using the same runtime as Blazor. Uh, blah, 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 and then it shows how this works. So this is where we are, and this is where we still are today. Phase two, uh, the Udon graph will compile with the Sharp compiler. And then the third phase is that instead of going directly into Udon assembly into the Udon VM, it will go directly into the Wasm VM. So it runs, like, in a way, lower level, right? And it runs more efficiently. And then on top of the Wasm VM, there will be an Udon assembly VM, which will can run the old Udon assembly. So backwards compatibility is still there, and there should be not much of a performance hit. Right. This was December 15th, 2022. Soba is not Udon 2. It is not WebAssembly. It is their own new thing, which we don't really have. They gave us some hints. Like, just, uh, you can read this. Like, you can pause this and read this, right? Like, right, all these things. They don't mention Udon 2. They don't mention WebAssembly in this post where they announce Soba. Yet they still say, we know you've been waiting patiently for this news. We were not waiting for Soba. We were waiting for Udon 2. We were waiting for WebAssembly. Wasm. Why? Let me show you why. On this post, I made a reply. Don't know where it is. Gotta find it. Okay, so we'll get to this in a bit, but... Uh, where is... That's interesting. I will keep that. Okay, finally, I found it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So they introduced Udon 2 as a concept December 15th, 2024. On March 15th, 14th, 2024, they posted an Udon 2 sneak peek. Here is Udon 1 doing a maze generator. Not great. Udon 2 directly ported over. No code changes. It's like two to three times faster. Great. Optimized in for Udon 2. Way faster. Right. So very exciting. Also, runtime URL construction, which I believe is still not a thing. Um, but either way, the point is, they introduced it nearly two years ago, and earlier this year, they, they introduced a teaser of it, right? The WASM version, you know, WebAssembly. The biggest performance improvements will be in situations where it needs to do raw calculations without much interaction with Unity. Great, that's fine. Um, April 4th, 2024, Merlin who worked at VRChat, announces that he was not, he no longer works at VRChat. Uh, he was presumably fired. Um, to my understanding, the following is what happened. Merlin multiple times tried to raise certain issues uh, with the VRChat team, uh, 
and that those issues were related to community interaction or just generally focusing on things the community needs. And on top of that, or uh, separately, Merlin is apparently aggressive. From what I can understand, based on how they act, and I believe they are kind of similar to me in this respect, um, they aren't actually aggressive, they are just punctual and like to the point, and like just honest, right? While he was aggressive to work with, or challenging to work with because of aggression or uh, whatever, um, which is presumably why he was fired, uh, he still did so in the context of he was trying to raise legitimate issues um, and get them solved, right? Um, especially to help the community. At least that's what he explained, right? Um, and I'll go into it for it later, but I'll, I believe Merlin more than the VRChat developers at this point. Um, and before we continue, I want to make something very, very clear. I do not hate VRChat. I do not hate the VRChat developers. I recognize that each person that works on the VRChat team for the most part, seems to care a lot about VRChat and its community. They are users of VRChat, right? I don't know any of them personally, but like, they do still seem to care, right? And their 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 opinions and perspectives are valid, first of all, but also not representative of VRChat per se, right? So like, my belief is that all of them genuinely want to make VRChat succeed. However. They are still representatives of VRChat. They work for VRChat, so they, in official capacities at least, they have to speak with VRChat's interests in mind, right? Because that's how businesses work. Which, as I explain it, will make it more confusing, in my opinion, but... Um, basically, I'm not going to spend the time now going through it. Um, you can see some of it here, so like... But basically, VRChat has a very, very long track record over the past six plus years of kind of promising or encouraging a thing. Even if they don't promise it, they might encourage it or, or hype it up, right? Um, they'll do that for features or bug fixes and then never do them. Or if they do do them, it's after a long time. And if they did do them, there's a good chance that it's been reduced or changed. And on top of that, in an effort to do transparency, they don't do it very well. Um, again, not trying to like call out any specific employees or anything. Like legitimately, I'm not trying to like witch hunt employees or anything like that. But across pretty much all of the public facing employees that have spoken words in public on behalf of VRChat or as a, an employee of VR, VRChat or even in the context that they're not an employee but they are still speaking on official VRChat matters because they have that information because they work for VRChat um, they just do not do a great job of PR or uh, contextualizing what they're saying right and in this post, I explain in the context of Udon, but for a long time, and, and I'm sure if you're watching this video, you can, you can say to other people and probably verify that this is a problem, right? Like, they, they constantly do this thing where they kind of say that they will work on a feature or Im implicate that there is a feature being worked on or anything like that, but then it just kind of vanishes with no word, right? VRChat's response to this has generally been, well, we can't just like talk about everything. And their partial solution to this was to release roadmaps, which the roadmaps are fine, but like I, I wish they could be better, but they're fine, right? But still, like they they just kind of ignore the core issue, right? Um they don't expose for the most part, to my knowledge, any of their internal stuff. They they don't if a feature for example, Udon 2 has to regress into what Soba is. This is the first time we're hearing about it. And they didn't explain why, in any capacity, in the original post, why it was regressed and changed, right? Um, 
and that that pattern happens all the time with a lot of different features. Um, they just the, the communication is not clear, right? Uh, one one example I can think of is, and again, I'm trying to make this as clear as I can. I am not, by any means, picking on anyone or saying they are bad or saying whatever, right? I'm not trying to make fun of people. I am simply stating facts and how they are received by the community, right? The example is the clock in VRChat. And if Strauss is watching this, he's probably rolling his eyes right now. But for a long time, there was this request, this feedback request, to add a clock to the game. Simple thing, right? Like, WoW has it, tons of MMOs have it. And like, for VR chat, it would, it's just a nice thing, right? Like, oh, what time is it, right? Because especially at the time, having a good overlay with a clock was not common. Especially for Quest people, right? People that play on Quest, they don't have an overlay system. They just have VR chat, right? At most, they have their quest overlay, but that's not convenient, right? There's no wrist, whatever. Um, either way, a clock was, would have been convenient. And as you may know now, they added it. Like, and they even added, which I'll get to, but they added other parts of it, like the clock. Um, but uh, optional clock on how to add a clock. Here it is. So, clock. This has been requested off and off since 2018. This was done in, tw uh, this request was in 2022. The UI needs a clock. The time is crucial for people. They need it for jobs, medications, whatever, right? Like, it's a very, very useful thing to have a clock. I can imagine everyone understands that having a clock is important. And again, for example, I used Oculus, the, the Oculus Dash. And I didn't really have any software, especially because like FPS VR costs money, whatever. So a clock was not easily accessible to me. So I cared about this a lot, right? Um, if we just scroll down, right? Keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. Straz. Again, I want to make this clear one more time. I am not making fun of him or them. I'm not making fun of Straz, right? I'm not trying to say they're wrong, per se. I'm not, like, I'm not in, 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 in Tupper's words, I am not, where is it? I am not attacking Straz personally or harassing them about this issue, right? I'm not trying to witch hunt him, right? The Straz, right? Uh, but this is what happened as a representative of VR chat, a, a community team member, right? Or whatever. This is a reply, an official reply in the capacity of VR chat, right? This isn't representing Straz as a person. This is representing VR chat. They are speaking on behalf of VR chat. That's how this works, right? We know this is a contentious one. Somehow a clock is controversial. Okay, that was the first thing I saw when I saw this. I was like, okay, controversial, a clock. Uh, you could have said well requested or popular, right? But it was contentious was the word because for some reason a clock is controversial. Okay, whatever. No, I'm going to look past that. It's such a seemingly small change, but one with potentially, potential ramifications that ripple out quite a bit. A clock. A clock. A clock. It's 12.52. That's useful information. This clock doesn't make me angry. It doesn't make me happy. It's just a clock. It's providing information. Potential ramifications that ripple out quite a bit. I am just simply confused at this point. 
but let's read on. We fear that it could potentially change social interactions in a negative way, along with a few other things. With that said, we see the desire for it and are considering it, but don't expect it to happen soon. We fear that it could potentially change the social interactions in a negative way, along with a few other things. Does not elaborate whatsoever. I do not believe they ever explained at any point. Like I, I, maybe they did. If someone knows, please let me know. They never explained whatsoever how it how it could like negatively. How could a clock? It's twelve fifty three. How could a clock cause negative social interactions? Yes, okay. Uh, maybe someone doesn't want their time zone to be known. Valid. But also, if someone cares that much about their personal whatever, right? Like, say they don't want people knowing what time zone they're in because that could be a clue as to where they live, right? Uh, if someone's dedicated enough, right? They still have to say that. They still have to, like, talk about it. Um, if they were live streaming, you could make an option to turn off the clock. Okay, great. Uh, I saw that one. Um, I cannot... I, like I've, tr I, I've legitimately ever since I saw this, literally two years ago at this point, I cannot. I've never come up with a guess as to what could this mean. Right? Negative could, put, could it, it could potentially the clock could potentially change social interactions in a negative way, along with a few other things. Again, no elaboration. You can, yeah, right. Right. Um, and now that we read that <laughs> clock, there was no developer update, but they did this. Let me see. Clock paid what now? Content who? Amogus? Yeah, whatever. Let's get. To the real feature time itself that's right you've made it to the most important part of the patch we added a clock this was one year after Straz said that we are uh, worried about the social the potential uh, negative impact of social interaction on social interactions and other things um but don't expect it to happen soon a year is not soon so that's fair but still the communication right so and hopefully this can emphasize what I mean, right? It's one thing to say, hey, uh, we want to add a clock, but we want to make sure that like the clock works correctly, which may sound say crazy, but, but we, we want to consider like when you're, whether you can turn it on or off or um, what format this person wants um, or uh, potential security vulnerabilities for like people not wanting other people to know what the time is right or whatever right there's a lot of different ways a lot of different ways it could have gone but they said this is contentious it's a seemingly small change but one with potential ramifications that rip out quite a bit we fear it could potentially change social interactions in a negative way along with a few other things they the this this paragraph makes it sound so bad like like it it's just like sure okay maybe maybe you need to make some considerations about how the clock works where where like user experience right completely valid like where will the clock be will it interfere with anything how do we make it should we should we make it clickable to like change its edits, which is the thing they have, which is I think is great. Um, right, th there's a lot of considerations you can do, and that's that's fine and all. But like, am I the only one? Seriously, am I the only one that reads this and 
isn't questioning it like what's this mean right and to save you time this pattern the way that they reply about things in this manner is consistent not just with Straz. and again i'm not not pointing out Straz in particular and i'm not trying to like personally oust anyone right it's just like the the way this communicates and and of course yes Communities like VRChat are going to be emotionally charged, but you have to consider that, right? When you're when you're announcing things, and, and the thing I don't get is also that they have had successful announcements before, where on the developer updates, there's not a lot of replies. In a good way, there are replies, and replies are like, "Oh, this I'm so excited for this feature. This is gonna be great, awesome, right?" Like really good responses, like for the most part. The responses on these developer updates are like neutral or good. Like for the most part, VRChat does a great job at communicating its features and what's com upcoming, right? And again, I also want to emphasize that like VRChat has done a lot of work in the past few years, especially post the AAC and everything. They've done an incredible amount of work to implement a lot of features and make the game more stable. Like I can't knock on wood, but I can't remember the last time I legitimately crashed from VRChat. And we remember, we remember how bad that is, right? Like, all of us, surely. Um, so still, it's... I'm just confused, right? It, here, let me make myself a little bigger. It's just like... What is this? Right? What is this? The replies to this. Right? Why do we have to write this this many it's not just it's not just one person, right? Like sure, one person this this one's fine, a suggestion. I hope you realize that sounds insane. And I agree. It's they're all like right? What what it does this mean? And the problem is, again, Vircha does a lot of work. VRChat has released a lot of great features. And I'm genuinely saying that. Like, I'm really happy with where VRChat's at. They've done such a great job. Unironically, everyone on the team that's worked there, right? Great job. Transparency isn't always good. And I believe, to give them the benefit of the doubt with this reply in particular, they have expressed in the past that they acknowledge, and I, I don't know the source for this, but I remember them saying it, that sometimes they kind of just say things as is. And it's a pattern I've noticed a couple times where they do have legitimate concerns about certain things. So like one, in exa one example was the VRAM or uncompressed limits, right? I had been begging for like years about a VRAM limit. So that way... And not to hard limit all avatars, but allow me to pick which ones I want to see. Because I don't want to see an avatar that has over like 200 megabytes of VRAM. Especially considering that it's not just textures, it's, it's, mesh, uh, it's meshes, it's, it's all sorts of things, right? I've been asking for, for years, and they finally eventually like were, were in the process of adding it. But I believe Tupper mentioned something about like, they're worried about... The communication in the UI, right? I'm not gonna dig for it because it'll take a while, and I just I just want to keep talking about this and kind of get it over with. But like, when I was told this, I just like two things came to mind. One, they recently had a UI overhaul, so that way, like, for, they had their their first overhaul, so that way the the very old UI gone. But then they had a, another refresh, like it was a similar vibe, but everything was just cleaned up, right? Very nice. I actually love the UI. Again, great job. UI is great. I love it. Using it today, pretty much no issues with it, as far as I know, remember. Um, they, they had to consider like UX and UI, right? And like where it would be placed. And, and when I say where it would be placed, they, they, they mean the, the, the note about like what this feature does, right? Because like they don't want to clutter the list of settings, right? With a little description of this is how this works, right? VRChat has tooltips. 
They have a tooltip system already built into the game. I turned it on. It's on by default, if I remember correctly. You can see on the bottom of your quick menu a little note when you hover like an option about what the option does. Right, and, and that's, the, that's the thought process. But then Tupper clarified that it is not that. It is the literal words of what the feature is. <laughs> and that the second part of it, which I was mentioning, okay, call it VRAM limit. Okay, great. But he didn't really communicate at the time, if I remember correctly, that it was that they were trying to consider the entire size of the avatar, not just the VRAM and not just the textures, because there are other components to an avatar that can be loaded in the VRAM, but also just data transferred between the GPU and CPU uh, memory, uh, stuff that's stored in RAM, on the, you know, CPU RAM. Um, but like, again, <laughs> the communication. So where does this put us? What I believe is that I believe that VR chat's in this weird situation where they're trying to be as transparent as possible, which is great. I'm really happy that they're like trying to communicate with the community and be on their side. I'm not mad at VR chat for undoing Udon 2 and Wasm. It's very upsetting, but it's it's fine. What I'm upset about is that in their original post about it. Sorry, sorry, one second. Udon 2. Nowhere to be found. Wasm. The first one where it's mentioned is the, the something, the, the 11th reply. It is not in here. We know you've been waiting patiently for this news. We've been waiting patiently for Udon 2. We've been waiting patiently for WebAssembly. For someone that does not know that Udon 2 existed, they, they can't even know that there was something other than Soba before Soba. People don't know that this is not the original Udon upgrade, right? People who do know, know the, the, the actual WebAssembly, right? Uh, VM that just is fast and contained and you can do a lot more in it. And there's even maybe, hopefully, if they were okay with it, a possibility of not writing C Sharp, but writing anything and using WebAssembly as it was intended on the web. Uh, but in VRChat, so like you can write a Rust program and run it on VRChat. Like, how cool would that be, right? Obviously, that's beyond the scope of what they originally said. But that was that's like a possibility, right? Because they're used WebAssembly. Um, but either way, this is not WebAssembly. It's just the the problem is not that VRChat isn't doing good work. They are. The problem is not that VRChat is uh, not. Uh, prioritizing features correctly because they clearly are like the amount of the, the the mountainous volume of features that they have released in the past two years is crazy like the game is so so much different than it used to be it is so much more playable it's so much more inviting like it's just a, it's a proper platform now right and again i love the arch I have no doubt in their capabilities uh, at all, right? Like, it, they've done a great job. It's just the communication. And I'll finally go to my reply so I can emphasize this. Here's what I said. This is the first reply. Fax, I respect you entirely, and I really don't want to be mean. But how is this an issue? When did this become a thing? I'm talking about... Apple forbids JIT compilation on iOS. I feel like the existing devel development of Udon 2 for all that time, two years, and the teased features go far beyond this kind of problem. If such a blatant or blunt issue exists, why wasn't this realized earlier? They announced Udon 2 two years ago. I guess I'm just feeling an incredible sense of contradiction. VRChat has expressed many times about the importance of feature priority. 
which Tupper especially has said, right? Again, not trying to witch on people or call out things. If anything, Tupper was trying to have the back of VR chat and explain to the community why things work, th that they do spend time grooming their backlog, prioritizing features, understanding blockers and how they can overcome them, right? They clearly do that thing. They do the software development and they do it well, right? The game runs great <laughs> for the most part. It's, the, it's so much better than it used to be. Again, how could you guys have spent all this time on Udon 2 and especially hyping it up when, in Tupper's own words, you guys were only teasing features that are close to finished? And fortunately, you don't have it on me right now. But Tupper did say this at some point. I can't remember where it was, but he very much did. And I'm not lying. I'm like, believe me, he told me specifically that they try to only release features or announce features when they feel it is ready. To be fair, they have expressed many times that they might announce something, but then a roadblock comes along afterwards. Fax made the reply, this reply that I'm replying to. He made this reply a day. Sorry, sorry. Again, with facts, not calling out facts in particular, not calling out maybe facts' opinions or whatever. Facts is representing VR chat when he says this, these words, these QA, right? I'm criticizing VR chat as a company. I'm not criticizing facts. Hopefully that's clear. Um, finally, after a day, and after like 60 replies or something, he explains, right? Why didn't they say it in the first place? Knowing the history, knowing that they fired the main developer that was running it, Merlin. They fired Merlin back in April of 2024. And it took them all this time, right? And I'll get to that in my next reply. How could I spend all this time in Udon? I was selling out entirely gone. And you're really going to throw away all that incredible work you guys did on Udon when the only legit problem is iOS. Someone else also explains that, sorry, Merlin himself explains that uh, it doesn't matter that just-in-time compilation is not allowed on iOS because you can do pre-compilation with Wasm, right? You pre-compile the Wasm or whatever, right? Like th th There are steps to avoid that problem, right? And it can work on Apple and on iOS. You guys are we're already planning compatibility between new Dawn 1 and 2, so I can't really see why you can't keep that as is as a fallback for iOS, which I think is also legitimately fine. Like, okay, just... Right, or SOPA could have been for iOS, similar how Apple loves to make their own languages, right? Um, I know you listed other reasons, but I think Merlin pointed out already how those reasons don't make a ton of sense. Merlin uh, replied... Oh, scroll down, you can pause it if you want to look at it. Uh, Merlin explained, pointed out each thing and why, like, this, it's problematic that they mention this. It basically feels like they ran into some issues, they didn't know how to overcome them immediately, so they kind of just scrapped the entire thing, because Merlin's not there to do it for them. Uh, it's stuff like this that makes us lose, lose confidence in VR chat, and I mean that. There's no clear consistency to the announcement of upcoming features and their timeline of being announced. There are so many features, especially quality of life, teased over the past two years that are still not in the game. Meanwhile, plenty of VRChat Plus exclusive features have been started and finished in that time, which is true. Granted, yes, again, there are a lot of legitimate other features that aren't just VRChat Plus that they have created and done, and the game is great. I'm not saying that VRChat's a bad game by any means. I'm just criticizing their communication strategy, right? I'm criticizing that, like, they keep announcing things, and then they fall off the radar. And then they just do these, these like unintentional, li likely unintentional, just, just, how can you spend so much time hyping up Udon to Wasm, but then decide to rewrite it, throw that away and rewrite it, which is fair. That's a legit decision that they made. I can't blame them for that. Like I said before, and like Merlin agrees with, Merlin agreed in this thread about that. Um, that's a decision they made. That's fine. But their communication about it, they know that a lot of people were excited about Udon 2 and Wasm specifically. And now they're announcing this feature, which not only is nowhere near performant as it was in Udon 2 with Wasm, but lacks a ton of features. It's like less, it's almost less feature rich than Udon currently is or Udon Sharp, right? 
there's so many features teased over the past few years that are not in the game. Meanwhile, plenty of you, right, whatever, which is true. Like, and that that just that's just uh, a salt in the wound, right? You're, you're spending this this time on these random features. Boops, remember boops. Hopefully you do. Boops were there. who asked for that? Who wanted to just be randomly poked and have an image appear in front of their nose from someone that's not in an instance? And why not just make that direct messaging, right? Which I agree that direct messaging should not be in your chat, to be clear, because it kind of ruins the point of the game. We do recognize the good features you did release in that time, which I do. Hopefully that's clear by now. Like I, for a long time, generally on these boards, after I've had my period of like just being an asshole because I was just having a rough time, um, I started to, to turn around, especially after Tupper gave me a chance because Tupper had blocked me on Twitter and, and some other things. And he reached out to me and like he gave me a second chance to just not be a dick, basically. But we asked for transparency. I've said numerous times that you guys need to, re to release a live task board that shows clear blockers and updates to features all in one place. You guys are not doing a good job at maintaining trust with the community, right? I totally understand if they don't want to just expose a ton of, like, things, right? They don't want to just expose problems. There's just a lot of risk involved with having a more um, a, a more live and living uh, board of issues, right? So, like, they, they have their um, feedback site, right? Which has these, right, filters. Like, you can filter these things, right? This is useful, but it's, like, you don't get... You don't get updates on these things, right? Like... Mark does track. Mark does in progress. Right. Like, it's not as granular as it could be. So, like, in the case of Wasm, over the past two years, they could have just, like, added some notes. Like, oh, we, we did this improvement today. Right? Like, oh, we, we found a way to improve its performance. Or we found this blocker that's giving us trouble. Right? Like, oh, uh, you know, maybe it's not working with this thing. Which could be community source. Community source problem solving. Um, right, like, and granted, there are problems with that because of copyright, and there are many solutions to help with the transparency while also being honest, and like, if something like that existed, or, or if, the, if there was just some way to better communicate that over time, people wouldn't be so shocked that they just kind of dumped everything, created this new thing, and kind of ignored the existence of Udon too, right? I also want to point out some other things. Here's the main bread and butter of the post that I think caused strife. Firstly, there's no mention of Udon 2 or Wasm in the original post, which I said already, I showed, despite it clearly being a widely renowned update that was previously promised. When I say promised, it's very specific wording. Yes, they, they didn't technically promise that Udon 2 will release at some point. There was a thing that I saw where they said in 2023, uh, let's see, I think I still have it up. This was in February of 2024 from Flair. Again, Flair is a great person. I've seen them talk about stuff before. I'm not criticizing Flair. Cri criticizing VR chat as a company and their communication strategy, right? Because surely, <laughs> Surely, they have a guidance and just a format for posting developer updates and tips between employees to like, hey, here's a, here's a way to make a, an effective developer update, right? It's PR, right? You, you have to have a PR strategy. Udon 2, successor to our scripting runtime Udon. It's been in development for quite a bit, at this point, a year and a half. And we're happy to announce that it will be entering closed beta very shortly. To me, very shortly means like a month or two, maybe three. It could be different to other people. These words exist. It was said by a VRChat employee. Again, not criticizing 
Flare, it was said in an official capacity by a VRChat employee. You're committing. This is the communication. You're committing to this. We are happy to announce that it will be entering closed beta very shortly. I'm not mincing words. That is literally what's written on the screen. You can see that. You can go to this link. You can verify it. You could probably way back machine the link. Let's see. Let's just double check. This is a real thing that they said. They communicated this. Right? They communicated that. So, so, so even up to this point, we've seen a performance teaser. We've seen it was announced, you know, in 2020, November 2020, or December uh, 2020, December 15, 2020. Uh, it has way back. You can go here and look at the Wayback Machine, right? This was a thing that was set. It exists, right? Here's the Udon sneak peek, which was after March 14th. February. This was like three. This was two weeks. Two weeks and one day. Sorry, two weeks. Less than two weeks. Either way, about two weeks. We're happy to announce I'll be entering closed beta very shortly. Udon 2 sneak peek. Videos of Udon. Yeah, sure. Not in the final, whatever. Closed beta very soon. Two weeks later. Teaser videos. What does this communicate? If you, two, two years ago from today, say that you're working on this thing, and then on the 29th of February, 2024, you say that you're announcing, you're happy to announce, that it will be entering closed beta very shortly. Again, not criticizing Flare. Criticizing VRChat as a company and their communication strategy. And then two weeks later, post videos of, v, of Udon to working running code and then three weeks after this you fire the guy who is in charge of it you don't say anything we learned from the person directly that they were fired or laid off right and then as far as I can see there's no there's no clarification we we ask right right uh, hopefully this was evident when i searched for udon 2 that um ever since Ur Ud uh, merlin was fired uh let's see i have uh, i've been waiting impatiently for udon 2 to ship this is a few months after uh he was fired sdk roadmap may 2024 again I am not criticizing facts as a person or anything. I am they are a VRChat technical community manager as listed on this page, and they are communicating this to the community in official capacity and criticizing VRChat's communication strategy. Udon 2. In progress. ETA. End of 2024. Udon 2. Not Soba. Udon 2. And then, not only are people asking about it, right? So, like, also for Udon 2, glad to see a roadmap, right? August 2024. Udon 2, in progress. The feature is getting active development. We are building feature internal testing. This is, this is after it was said. That it, we're happy to announce will be entering closed beta very shortly. This is six months later. October 2024. It's been a few months. Is there any news on Udon 2? Close. Automatically closed. October 31st. I wonder how long it will take for Udon 2 to arrive. Is it really by the end of this year? And when will the features like texture streaming actually be enabled? They're working on this. I'm actually very happy. Again, your chat's doing great work. Midmap streaming is in beta or whatever. I'm, I'm so excited. So excited. Great feature. Which they've, they've been communicating really well about midmap streaming. 
great job. Like, no, no problems there, right? I'm, I'm not having an issue with that. This was posted two days ago. Edit. Can't see the edits, I think, because I'm not logged in because I'm currently banned from the forum until February 1st, so that's over two months away. Um, this was edited. Uh, let's go back to that, my thing. There's no mention of Budon 2 in original posts. Secondly, despite the majority of the thread being intense and legitimate concern about what happened to Wasp and Udon 2, which it was, if you go to this thread, you will see, if you look at all these replies, there are four VRChat staff replies made before Wasm or Udon 2 was mentioned, which is true. They were facts, but I didn't mention facts. I didn't criticize fact. I just am stating facts. There were four replies. Of the replies, one of them quoted two replies, which mentioned Udon 2, but they did not directly mention Udon 2 or Wasm in their VR, official VRChat developer reply. Which to me is concerning, because like we, we are asking about this previous thing, right? And they just kind of just ignored it. It took nearly an entire day to have a response about Wasm and Udon 2, which is true. They took them like an entire day to formulate a Q&A, which, sure. Having a Q&A as a strategy after, you know, that's fine. I don't have an issue with that because that, that's legit strat, right? Third, like someone else mentioned, the original Udon 2 feedback request was renamed to Soba and the Udon 2 link redir redirects to Soba. I click on it, it says P Udon 2. Udon 2 Soba. Hopefully you saw that. I'll do it again. Udon 2 Soba. Okay, so it redirects. Great. Which is not a thing you usually do. <laughs> like, I've looked through a bunch of feedback requests by queuing their API, but whatever. They also changed the post content from this. Udon 2 is a VR chat. Udon is a feature. You can read this yourself. Here's the, the flow diagram, which I talked about before. To this. This is different. You can read it. Here's the new flow, which we talked about. Fourth, will Soba have everything that was announced for Udon 2? No, not everything. In fact, the initial announcement contained many promises we shouldn't have made. To my knowledge, before this day, they never... Because I, I spent a few hours trying to dig through the forums and, and whatnot like to understand... They never really mentioned before this date, two years later after they initially announced Udon 2, which means that they were been working on it for over two years. Did they ever say that they made too many promises? In fact, like they never really promised anything. All they really said is like, here's how the structure will work. Here's some performance. The only thing they like over promised that they didn't really would do, at least as far as we've seen so far, is the roadmap, uh, sorry, the, this one. Rapid announcement will be entering close very, very shortly, right? They rolled back on a change, which is what they said they're doing. This is what they're doing with SOPA. They rolled back on a change, which is not new behavior from VRChat. Age restriction for content getting was turned off and still is not turned on. Very few people are aware of this. This is what I wrote as a note for this uh, link. Uh, really, we, content gating changes. This was December 3rd, December 7th, 2023. We released content gating, but then we tweaked it a bit. The system is meant to be forced on for all users under 18. However, as it turns out, a lot of people did not put in their correct age. We severely underestimated how many legitimate cases of people playing the wrong day existed. Blah, blah, blah. As such, the age based forced content gating is disabled for now. But we will be returning. But the age-based forced content gating will be returning early next year once our processes have improved. Early next year implies, I would believe, May at the absolute way latest or earlier, right? So here they are committing, again, Tupper, if you're watching this, you're probably not, but if you're watching this, I'm not criticizing you. I think you're a great person. I've seen you interact at a couple events. Uh, you seem completely normal. Like, I have no reason to hate you. And you've given me personally a second chance in my DMs. Like, you didn't just ban me 
from everything. You you gave me a second chance, right? You are a cool person. I don't think that you. I'm not criticizing you. I'm criticizing VR chat's communication strategy, and I hope that's clear by now. But we'll be returning early next year. It is still not fixed. It's been nearly a year, and you. There are many. I hope people know this. Like, this isn't a secret anymore. Like, there are not safe for communities. People run, like, swingers events in VR chat, right? Like, we're not dumb anymore, right? <laughs> we know what's going on. Um, there are communities that relied on this functionality. There was one community in particular, because I know the person that runs it. We talked, like, one on one before. They didn't know that the adult and sexual tags did not age restrict. They were running events on Group Plus, allowing people to be green or blue. I know people that go to that event who are friends with minors. Granted, after I showed by making an alt account that had their age set below 18, it was set to like 14, I was able to join their world. They, they now require orange status, but that's still not great. Um, and there are plenty of other communities that run that in that way. Uh, there's also communities or people that, that run like friends or friends pluses like that, right? Even, even invite plus isn't safe because blue. Right. But we'll be returning early next year. It has been a year. It has been two weeks short of a year. And it's still not enabled. And even though after I got banned from the forum and made all these comments, they announced age verification. Hey, it's Strat from the VR Chat community team. And today Again, I don't hate Strats. I'm going to be talking I'm not criticizing Strats. I'm criticizing VR Chat. VR Chat. VR Chat. Criticizing VR Chat's communication strategy. Regardless of who is delivering the information. Because VRChat as a company decided to post this video, right? Hopefully multiple people were involved in the process of releasing this video. Where is it? Where is it? Well, first of all, uh, it's invite only for groups, and then it'll expand the groups. There's no mention of whether or not pe normal people can create any instance that's age-restricted, which I think is... A we should have that. Um, but they didn't commit to that, so that's fine. right? I don't care if they didn't commit to it and we don't get it. It would suck, but I'm not criticizing them for that, right? Um, in here somewhere, there's a little thing. In this trial phase, age verification will not impact content filters. Age-based forced content gating is disabled for now, but will be returning early next year. Even though... But it's something we're considering and will probably do in the future. So to be fair, they're considering it. Great, I'm happy. What are the chances, based on our track record and discussion today, so far, that this will happen? Right? Again, I'm not criticizing stress. I... <sighs> Let me just continue. There will back a change, right, age restriction. On top of the radio silence, someone asked about Udon 2 27 days ago. Someone asked about Udon 2 11 days ago. You can go click on these if you want. I'm not gonna click on them right now. Steam Audio. July 28th, 2022. We are accelerating efforts and poking Valve a bit more because we think this could address a ton of problems. We think Steam Audio is quite close. Right now, we're waiting on Valve to get back to us regarding some crashy crashing issues 
when I read this, this communicates to me that they're working on Steam Audio, progress is going well, and they feel like it will solve a lot of problems. We're waiting on Valve, right? Maybe half a year. Maybe a year at, at worst. This was two and a half years ago. We still don't have Steam Audio. Do we need to say more? <laughs> and again, I'm going to reiterate a couple things. I'm not criticizing anyone that works at VRChat personally. I'm criticizing VRChat as a company and their communication strategy. And that's it. It's not even their, 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 I'm not criticizing their, their sprints because I'm pretty sure they do sprints. I'm not criticizing that they are prioritizing feature development properly because it's clear they do. Like even, even if they're prioritizing like VR, VR chat plus features, right? Which is fair because like you can't rely on investor money and like I totally will defend them for the most part for making VR chat plus features, not boops, but most of them. Um, like stickers. Stickers are so funny. They're, they're so fucking funny. Let me see if I can find the picture I took. Okay. So, I was streaming music, right? Funny. This is funny. That's just funny. This is my favorite photo. Stickers enabled this. This one right here, this the boy kisser is something I put on the stream. That sticker is someone that pl someone placed in the world. Again, this feature is so funny, and I love it. And I'm glad that it's a VRChat Plus feature. It, it's worthwhile, right? Like, like they're increasing the reason to buy VRChat Plus, and not criticize them on that. I'm criticizing their communication. Let's hopefully uh, let's let's just finish this out. Uh, Steam Audio, you Udon UI. This was a year and a half ago. Where is it? I have not heard anything about it whatsoever. Even though it's such like alongside world persistence that that would be like such a crazy user experience thing. Oh my god. I didn't even know this was a thing. Someone asked for in 2017, seven and a half years ago, seven and a half years ago. I was 19 years old. I am now 26. They asked for to be able to create events and have people send notifications. We already have notifications. We don't have events. I feel like this is a great, great, great feature that could exist. This could, this would help so much with everything. Like, not only would it help with the people that run like club events, right? Especially if like there was a way to like subscribe to an event type. Like, oh, I don't want to go to this club at this time because uh, my favorite person will be. But if they were to announce at this event when this person is playing, I will happily subscribe to that, right? How great would that be? But then also like, hey guys, we're going to run an event. Um, instead of relying on notifications and hoping people remember, you can like, hope, like how cool would it be if not only you can subscribe to the event and like go to your events tab and see whatever and like maybe get like a little wrist pop up. It's like, oh, hey, these are my, like, you know, if you were to have like a little like watch, like a smartwatch type of deal, you can like swipe between and be like, oh, I have an event coming up. Like, um, for example, Uh, Google has this feature. You can't really see it very well, but it's there. It lets me see my calendar in a linear, linear way, you know? How cool would that be? Like, right? Still not in the game. Uh, and they even acknowledged and overpromised that they, and, uh, they rolled back on a change and even acknowledged that they overpromised, which they didn't actually overpromise, I don't think, based on what I saw, per se. I mean, they did, absolutely, but like, 
it oh yeah it wasn't until the, the, the facts saying this now again i'm not criticizing facts i'm criticizing Virtus communication strategy uh the initial announcement contained whatever they have talked about over promising before making such a promise would be lying no matter how you spit it this was what tepper said again not criticizing tepper i'm touching criticizing vr chat's communication strategy october 26 2023 over a year ago this was about uh this was about a security issue i'm very very happy like this was great i remember reading this they they explained a postmortem of w what happened with this release um the timeline of events like i i can't explain that like this is actually so nice like this postmortem is beautiful i'm not lying when i say that i'm not trying to like hype it like this is just great this is like cloud flare level postmortem right we're still in the process of fixing up things but whatever all this isn't a guarantee that we'll never ship something broken alive again. As nice as that would be, making such a promise would be lying no matter how you spin it. All of this isn't a guarantee that we will never ship something broken to live again. They've been really good recently about bug, bug squashing, so I can't, I can't like comment on negatively on that, right? But this phrase, even if it's in this context, is so like... It just, it contradicts everything that we see, that I've explained. This concept. Yes, again, it's, it's in the context of b bugs, but like, I feel like features and are, are much more controllable than bugs, right? Like, you at least can know if something won't, you can know if you don't have a date. You can know if there's not a confident date, right? That you, you'll release something. But somehow didn't learn that lesson. This was posted five days after Merlin was fired. Any idea on Uno when Udon 2 comes out? We're working on it. Oh yeah, uh, April 9th. This is uh, like two months after... Two months after this. Right? Six days, 11 days, 26 days, 98 days. But don't hold me to that. That's fine. But still, this is, this, is, this is communication after Merlin was fired. This was three months. Three months after Merlin was fired. Three months and a week. This is fine, but like... Udon 2 in progress. Udon 2. Not Soba. Udon 2. Right. All right. You've probably seen it already, but here's the kicker. 209 days. 209 days after Merlin was fired. And 27 days ago. Which is less than a month ago. <laughs> Udon 2 is in development. It'll enter closed beta testing soon. April 9th is five days after Berlin was fired. It will enter closed beta testing soon. February 29th. 29th of February. We're happy to announce that we'll be entering closed beta very shortly. April, 4th, April 9th, five days after Berlin was fired. It will enter closed beta testing soon with an open beta scheduled for later this year. Open beta. October 30th, 2024, 27 days ago, and 209 days after Merlin was fired. Is this still underway? Heard some news about one of the devs working upon it being dismissed. He literally addresses this in this post, and Fax says, yep, still working on it. 27 days ago, we are working on Udon 2. Not Soba. Udon 2. So, Presumably based on their outward communication, as far as I can see. Within the last 27 days, they were able to start working on Soba, and not only have some work in progress to give feedback on its performance, but also have a general roadmap 
And they somehow know that Soba will eventually, at some point in the future, assuming the future is still being worked on and will be released, have similar performance to Waz and Mudan 2. 27 days ago, we were still under the assumption that Udon 2 was going to be the same Wasm based solution with the performance they showcased. The performance they showcased. Right? The performance they showcased. And Fax replied with, yep, still working on it. Again. I'm not criticizing Fax. And, and like, to be fair, the Fax, like, This could have been like, oh, uh, this person's asking about it. I have some free time. I'll just say, yeah, we're still working on it. Because we are, like, we're working on the next iteration of Udon. But this is why... I'm pretty sure the staff of VRChat understand that, like, the community is not their friend. The community is not someone they know. The community is an entity, just like how VRChat is an entity. The, the community is an entity that will interpret things wildly differently, depending on who the person and their background and understanding of things, right? This is PR training. Like, you have to, you, if you're going to speak on behalf of a company, you have to be told you have to know right you have to know the bounds of what you're you're speaking on right and you have to understand the the weight of the, your words right again i'm not criticizing facts and i'm not saying that facts in particular is bad about this right no one's bad about it at the company it's just like there needs to be a strategy there needs to be a release and communication strategy employees should not like just just reply to things like that that is that's not transparency that's just communication of some degree that is not accurate right because of the context right VR, I, i'm fine with vr chat being transparent but but they need to be honest they, they need to be realistic they need to understand that their community doesn't know the inner workings of their company because they can't see that Yes, when Fax replied with this, Fax probably had the context that, like, yeah, we were working on the next iteration of Udon, and I remember in our meetings that, like, uh, we can't really work on the original WASM one, and we're going to this new one, but it should be fine, like, you know, because in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal, right? And that's probably what Fax was thinking, like, it isn't, because it isn't a huge deal, but why are we so upset about it, and why am I so upset about it? It's because this is a pattern that's happened for years. The, the way that they, they communicate effectively com, uh, will uh, promise things. Yes, maybe they're not explicitly promising things and they mention multiple times that things can change. But still, it's not even that. It's not like we're assuming things will be done. It's that things are literally being communicated to us that they will be done, or they will be in this state, right? Things will be done in the process. Things will be done. Things will be done. This is the same thing. They could follow through with age verification. But they also might not. So, <laughs> that is not transparency. Really sorry, but you can't keep doing this. We wouldn't be so mad about you guys doing this if you were just more honest about things. When I say honest, I don't mean stating the expected truth in the moment. I mean, yeah, we're working on it. We don't know. That's fine. Here's this cool feature we're working on. We hope it can be in the game soon, but we don't know because there could be a lot of problems with it. So we'll keep you updated. And to keep you updated, it could be, hey guys, like we mentioned, we were working on it, but we ran into this problem. And it unfortunately means that we won't be able to release this thing as expected. I hope what I said just there, those last two sentences, makes sense. Like, 
I feel like that's a really effective way to communicate. Hey, we we are we are really excited about this thing because like it could like improve the game performance by 10x and like everything will be better and you can do so much more, right? Like along with all these other features like persistence and string loading and everything, right? Like how cool is that? No mention of Udon 2, no mention of WebAssembly. As you can probably guess, Udon 2 is the successor to our scripting runtime, Udon. It's been in development for quite a bit. And we're happy to announce that it will be entering closed beta very shortly. I did commit a mistake. I screenshotted Straz, something Straz said. And it was clarified to me that it was not about the community or what was being done here. It was about a, a, like a, a World of Warcraft thing. My bad. I am sorry. But hopefully, I've explained why it makes sense to me why I'm upset, why the community is upset why it's very weird and annoying that i got banned until february 1st on the forum when all that happened was that my post was removed and sai dm'd me about it and asked me just to not do that stuff and i was like okay as long as you guys you know do effective communication whatever or fix these issues about your communication and then i was banned um, I don't understand, and like I explained all this as well, like I understand how all these things work, right? I don't understand why this has to be said. Um, posting from the woods on a shaky LTE connection. The squirrel's watching me type. Funny. I love, it's just how Tupper speaks. It's great. Folks, this thread has gotten really far off the rails. By off the rails, surely he is talking about everyone asking about and critiquing the Udon 2 thing that we were all just talking about 101 replies or 100, literally 100 replies between this and the original post. Off the rails. Okay. I understand you've got strong opinions and hot takes. Communicating that you guys told us that earlier this year that uh, Udon 2 would be in closed beta very shortly and back in February and then showing us performance uh, benchmarks back in uh, March of 2024. So yeah, strong opinions and hot takes are us upset that you guys promised, literally saying to us on two occasions, both in February from Flare and April from Fax that it would be entering closed beta very soon. That's a strong opinion and a hot take. Uh, but nothing excuses personal attacks and borderline harassment. The only person that, um, to my knowledge, because I read most of the thread, but I might have missed something, that done, did, did anything close to that was me for the thing I just said. And I realized it was a mistake. I was just a little bit annoyed, and I, I was scrolling my Blue Sky feed casually, and then I saw what Strauss said, and crazy coincidence that, like, the quote from the guy that Stress was talking about was a community manager that was talking about how crazy communities can be and how they can push a narrative. There's ways to have this discussion productively, respectfully, and with the goal of either understanding each other or of improving the end result. This exact problem that we're having in this thread 
has been happening for literal years. And I literally am showing you right this moment that VR chat as a company has communicated to us that they were happy to announce back in February of 29th of 2024 that Udon 2, the Wasm successor to Udon, will be entering closed beta very shortly. I would hope that the hundred replies before Tupper said this can emphasize that we are frustrated with their communication strategy, which sucks. VR chats as a company's communication strategy sucks. Not anyone individually that works at VR chat. All I had a chance to do was skim the thread, but the posts I've seen, so he's acknowledging that he didn't really read the thread, but the posts I've seen are nearly devoid of all those qualities. Let's gander. <sighs> Japanese doodles. Great. Uh, thank you for one-time purchase. To be honest, it's not clear why it's separate from Udon. And what is Soba VM? Why aren't, aren't you supposed to use WebAssembly engine before? Um, so rather than being a direct successor to Udon, my understanding is it's intended as a new option for creators to specifically choose, which uh, factory replies as correct. Uh, they choose Soba, Udon, Graphic, Udon, Sharp, whatever. Okay, great. Uh, folders. Is Soba 2 the new name for Udon 2? And then Prismic says, yes, the candy for Udon 2 was even updated to be named Soba, which I've demonstrated before. Happy to see we'll have much better programming. Great. Okay. Someone just acknowledging, yeah, Soba's great. They probably didn't know about Udon 2. Um, I find it interesting how much has changed compared to the original proposal they gave us. Also, no, no more mention of Wasm, which was interesting. I don't know, it feels a bit weird to me. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. They are concerned that <laughs> Wasm was not mentioned, but they are still looking forward to it. Great. Uh, doo -doo -doo, not talking about it. Also, the performance benefits are listed only on as par, whereas the performance improvements uh, were the one of the showcase benefits of Udon 2. I'm still excited, but definitely eager to learn more of what to expect as time goes on. I gotta be honest, I think that was the most respectful fucking reply I've ever heard in my life. Like, unironically. But definitely eager to learn more of what to expect as time goes on. Like, that almost reads to me like someone who had experience in not being able to co communicate effectively and hurting other people's feelings by accident, and they've learned how to improve their communication strategy. That is such a nice reply. If Udon and Sober are so good, where's Robin? That was a funny joke, I laughed at that. Uh, doesn't matter what you pick, it's all gonna be spaghetti code anyways. Not needed, whatever. Okay, so one reply that's kind of contentious. Uh, right, this concerns me. I thought you guys planned to use Ready Solutions, Roslyn, Blazor, WebAssembly. Very, very knowledgeable reply, which embeds full-featured performance and well-sandboxed language implementation. But it looks like you have to build a new partial bicycle once again. Maybe not a great, but not like, not degrading. It's a legitimate critique, right? So a development cycle will take a few more years, which I think, based on everything I've been showing you, is a valid concern. Is Sopa going to be using Wasm, or are we junking that now? It looked like progress was good in the previous developer updates. If it's being junked, I'll be a little sad. But if the plan is to run the Wasm-based VM side-by-side -side with standard Udon, it'll be great for computationally expensive systems, which up to now have only been feasible to amortize... I have not said this word before. Amortize... Gradually write off the initial cost of a repair reducer. And offload to... Okay. Uh... Merlin... Okay. Okay, from what I've been told, Wasp approach was thrown out the window, so it was completely different. Okay. Uh, Udon 1. I'm gonna go through all these. Uh, uh, yeah, whatever. Is there a focus on performance? Big promise for Udon 2 was better performance, and worlds only continue to get more complex. Newer, more complex game worlds continue to run worse than ever. I would hope that Sobo would try to solve this and let creators build bigger things. We'll be able to see something like this for Soba, and they quote from March 14th, the original performance thing. We'll be able to see something like this for Soba anytime soon. What's even the point of Soba if it 
does not really improve much on anything. Even the current Udon fork was just released with generic support. That's not the Udon 2 we were hearing about. That's just Udon 1.1 or something. Just how behind VRChat must always be on everything and always choose the most lazy and limited approach. Just sad. That is a very strong opinion. But it's fair. It's a fair opinion. Six likes. I replied, I have some thoughts about this. Probably best everyone that's thinking the same thing. You're right, lack of laws and being mentioned is concerning. That was a pinnacle of the new system. If this is what we think it is, then I'm not happy. Udon 2 was supposed to be a game changer, and its new messaging tells me otherwise. This is a reply I made. I don't really see how can, this can be rude. Okay, I'm actually just going to skip because hopefully I've... Okay. Real annoying that VRC will not actually tell the community why it introduced this big regression in functionality other than being super vague. What happened to being open? Are you afraid of being refuted by mirror the community? Yes. This is very... This will qualify under rude. But this is also the developer that they fired that was the primary person working on Udon 2 and is probably the reason that hit Merlin being fired is the reason that Udon 2 is not here. <laughs> So, again, quite confused. But the posts I've seen are nearly devoid of all those qualities. And I have a healthy dose of extremely obvious passive aggressiveness too. So it's f completely fair for Tupper. Again, not criticizing Tupper. Criticizing the VRChat head of community. The person that represents VRChat and is the head of interacting with the community is critiquing or criticizing the passive aggressiveness or perceived passive aggressiveness of replies from the community such as I'm still excited, but definitely eager to learn more of what to expect as time goes on. That is a passive aggressive. Okay. Uh, so please knock it off. Okay, so we are now children in an elementary class and we need to knock it off. Remember the human or whatever Reddit used to tell you. So we have to expect people who are representing VRChat in, official, in an official capacity and have knowledge and information inside of VRChat that we do not have, we are expected to remember that they're humans while we are told that our concerns over the poor communication around this feature and that the feature we were excited for is now gone. Remember that the team wants VR chat to do the best thing possible given all the factors at play. I don't think anyone's refuting that concept. We use VR chat too, and we create using VR chat too. Okay. Uh, so take a lap and chill out a bit. How is knock it off, remember the human, or whatever? Uh, we use VRChat too, and take a lap and chill out. Not passive aggressive. I'm just gonna tangent real quick on a personal note. I struggle with um, what I believe to be a personality disorder, and it's really hard for me. Um, I'm not diagnosed with it, but it's something that like. I'm pretty sure I have. Uh, it's hard for me to understand who I am. Because when I was growing up, I was kind of told... I, I, my, my reality was given to me. It was not learned or expressed by myself. I, I was kind of subject to my surroundings and what was happening. Um, plenty of times my mother would promise things like she would on Christmas day I would open up a gift and inside of it, the gift box would be a piece of paper promising me that I would get a gift 
His mother also refused to pay for water and food for us um, because she just I'm not trying to make this like a sob story and whatever but like this is to emphasize that like I know what gaslighting is I know what it feels like to like, like my nephew I love my nephew. He's a great person. He is quite... People would probably perceive him definitely as aggressive or, or rude, but he's just a very funny, unique person. He f screws with me all the time because he knows that I'm gullible. He knows that... But it's funny because, like, in a way, it almost trains me to learn when he is screwing around with me so that way like it, it gives me a reference point to help improve my ability to not be gaslit this is manipulation i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sugarcoat it and i'm not trying to like i'm not trying to like blow things out of proportion but like I love VRChat, I love the VRChat community, and as much as like I've been such a fucking asshole to people in this community because I've just, I struggle with a lot of things and it's hard, um, I don't appreciate this. I really don't. I really don't appreciate the VRChat head of community telling us to take a lap and chill out when back in, um, February of 2024, they were happy to announce that Udon 2 will be entering closed beta very shortly and showing us on March 14th these really cool performance benchmarks between Udon 1 and Udon 2. Like, I really hate doing this. I really am uncomfortable. Like I, I don't like engaging in drama in this capacity. I don't like putting my face on the screen and talking about stuff like this because I might be wrong. I don't, I don't like talking on things that I don't have context for. I've learned over the years that when I speak out of turn, like I did in this thread by screenshotting something Straz said and taking it out of context, that was wrong of me. I don't like doing this, but I've learned that if I see bullshit, I'm going to call out bullshit. I still respect all the VRChat developers, even Sach, who apparently does not work at VRChat anymore. I don't know why, but even though I like hated him to a degree because of how annoying he was in the Discord, like I don't hate hate him it's just like he was just frustrating and i've come to respect his perspective of why he responds to people in a certain way and whatever right i love vr chat and i love the community the the, the things that vr chat has enabled i have four thousand hours i have four almost four thousand four hundred hours of vr chat and starting vr chat again in 2020 helped me like pull like it was part of my self-improvement to be where I am today. I finally have a job again. Like, VRChat means so much to me. Even though, like, I don't really go that deep into the community, it, it like, it's such a powerful platform. And I don't think people realize how powerful it is. So, to be told to take a lap and chill out a bit. After all of this, after all all of the communication that they have given us around this feature. I... I don't want to say I can't take it anymore because I'm just going to have to deal with it. But like... I'm sorry. There are so many horrible things I can say. I can slander people if I wanted to, but like... I can't because that's wrong and... I shouldn't do that. But I hope you can gather 
in my words about how frustrating this is. I don't like being told that I'm in the wrong when I'm not in the wrong. I don't like feeling like I'm the problem when I am not the problem. I don't like when the VR chat head of community tells me to take a lap and chill out a bit because I, I guess I'm overreacting. I am, again, to be clear, and I'm pretty sure Merlin has this exact same stance. We don't care that you guys had to ditch Wasm or Rudon 2, the original plant. No one fucking cares. It's very frustrating, but no one fucking cares, right? It's fine. Like, you made a business decision. You can't logically continue development on Wasm right now. Because maybe you could in the future, but like right now you can't because you've, you've had to lay off people and slim down and just improve your business, right? That's fine. That's okay. And again, I'm not criticizing any of you as people. I'm not slighting you, right? I'm upset that you can't be honest with us. That you have to play these fucking games and like pretend that you're better than everyone because you're in this position when in reality the only reason you're in this position is because you were lucky. You were lucky that VR chat managed to get the, the, the player base that it did. You're lucky that like you're in this position. You're so fucking lucky and you don't realize it. You cannot speak to people like this, Tupper. This is not okay. Like this is really fucking not okay. Anyway, I hope I made my point. Um, VR chat's great. I love VR chat. I love the friends I made. The people that mean so much to me. The the high school friend that I was able to reconnect with through VR chat, and that person is also just means a lot to me. The person I met through that person that likes sim racing. You know who you are. Um, I love the internet. I love my internet friends.